Hello YouTube. So I am going to go over the process of rigging a VR chat avatar. Uh, there's one thing you need to keep in mind if you're using this to rig your VR chat avatars is that I am using a paid add-on called Auto Rig Pro. Um, I heavily recommend Auto Rig Pro. Let me go ahead and look that up right now. So This is the add-on that I'm using to rig uh, my avatar. It's $40, which is a decent chunk of money, but I think the time it saves, the uh, features it offers is well worth the money, um, including a rig fast. Just if you've rigged characters with Mixamo before, um, this is a very similar process, but it gives you a full rig with control handles, things like that, uh, well worth the money. Um, and there's a lot of other features as well. I'll go over some of them during this tutorial, but uh, if you're interested in this add-on, I will post the link in the description. All right, so this is the character uh, we'll be rigging today. This is a client commission that I'm doing. Um, the avatar's name is Caden, um, and yeah, let's get into it. So here we have the Auto Rig Pro uh, setup, and we're gonna use the Smart Setup. Um, it's okay to have a modifier on your avatar. I do recommend applying any subdivision modifiers you're using beforehand. I prefer to keep a mirror modifier. Um, so even if I had a subdivision, I would apply it, delete half the model, put a mirror modifier back on, uh, just so I can have the mirror modifier because it makes putting the waiting, weight painting on one side of the model to the other instantaneous, very easy and AutoRig Pro has no problem using that. Um, all right, so I think there's some eyeballs in here. Yes, perfect. So we've got the eyeballs there. This is actually the full model. We're gonna go ahead and select the main body and say AutoRig Pro Smart, get selected objects, full body. Now, we just add little points here. I'm gonna add the neck point right about there, chin right there shoulders and wrists right there well we have the spine root and ankles right there doesn't have to be exact there will be an opportunity you will actually need to do one final tweaking of bone position and stuff uh, so you just generally want to get things in the right position but doesn't have to be perfect uh, I would recommend changing your spine count to three. VRChat can actually use four spine bones now, but I still prefer using three just for myself. And we're also going to go to facial setup, click that, and begin placing these points uh, to the corresponding location. So there are ears that we can add. Uh, but since the ears are very different here, I won't actually be using these. I'm just gonna place them in a spot here or so, and I will remove them a little bit later. Um, these are the, the cheek uh, cheek points. <laughs> uh, so there's like a inflate option, so you can make like puffed cheeks. And so you just generally wanna position this on the cheek. These are your lip bones. So we're gonna go ahead and place that to the best of our ability. It's a little chin point there. So right about here, I'm just scaling vertically. And again, just trying to position these as best as possible. Okay, okay, okay. And something like this all right next is the nose so you want one spot at the tip of the nose and the other at the kind of middle of the eyeballs usually i use the kind of a tear duct as the point i'm putting it between so right about there so next we have the eyes uh some changes we can do here i like to put it in the corner well, a little odd. Let's scale it down first. And I'm over. And we've got the bottom 
lined up pretty well. Something to this effect. And now we'll put these on the top. It's going to be a little bit difficult to rig this 100% correctly, but we'll probably get pretty darn close. Okay, next is the eyebrow. So I'm actually going to hide this object because we have the eyebrows beneath the hair. And we'll just line it up. Boom, boom, and boom. Okay, that all looks very good. Again, we can tweak things in just a moment. Uh, for now, we do want them to include our eyes. I have labeled my eye object uh, sphere, I believe, <laughs> which is not the best way to do it. Ideally, it is named eyes. So let's add that now. And now it's an easy search to find it. Perfect. So let's go ahead and hit go to create the initial setup. Oaks, welcome to stream. You added the keyboard and mouse action overlay. I did, indeed. It does help quite a bit. Um, it helps. And hopefully, uh, I'm kind of putting together some... You, I'll be uploading this segment of my stream to YouTube. Uh, so hopefully, that'll help anyone following along. Um, all right. So, a lot of things are... Also, hope, hope you're having a good Tuesday, Oaks. Welcome to the stream. Did you have a President's Day off? I'm going to move the hips into position. Right about here. So one thing for the hips that you'll definitely need to do if you're looking to do full body tracking is you need the root, the bottom of the root, to be behind and above. So back uh, to the right in this case, to the right and above the hip. That is vital if you are going to be doing full body tracking. Otherwise, it's going to twist in a really unexpected way, flipping, basically flipping the hips up or the pelvis up in an uncomfortable looking <laughs> and very odd way. I did have it off. Oh, heck yeah. I did as well. I was enjoying chilling and played a lot of video games. <laughs> okay, now we're going to line the knee up right here. Put it a little bit forward. You want a very slight bend in your knee, um, just so the uh, rig knows the direction to bend. Basically kind of like crinkling it so it'll have an easier time bending the way you want. Next, we'll take this. It's best to put it at the bottom. I attempted to dive into learning nodes. Geometry nodes? Oh, heck yeah. There's so much you can do with that. Certainly intimidating, though. <laughs> put the ankle right here. Just trying to get everything kind of lined up as best we can. I'm going to lower the head. I want the pivot point to be basically evenly between the jaw and the back of the head. Made a very basic color ramp cell shader node. I really like. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, so, uh, sorry. Shader nodes. Gotcha. Very cool. Yeah, the, uh, there's some really, really cool ones out there that I've seen. I have yet to do too much of it with myself. Now, for the jaw, basically, to position the base of the jaw, you want it to go to the chin, but you want the pivot point to be where you imagine it will rotate down like a circle. So if this makes a circle, you would have a little line right here, and that gives you an idea of the motion of the jaw. Uh, a lot of times, or when I was first messing around with this, I'd put it down here, but then that creates a really odd uh, rotation 
that doesn't seem as natural. Best to have uh, an idea of where it will start and where it will end when the jaw opens and closes. All right. So those are the legs and the torso. Now I'm gonna focus on the arms and hands. Uh, what I like to do is straighten these out at least a little bit. I like this. Uh, I found that if it's too angled forward, uh, VR chat will have a really odd time snapping the bone back and forth. It really prefers a very straight line. Um, and then the shoulder's in a good spot, usually right in the armpit. And we've got our elbow. You can I see the form I've made? Let's just try to set that up correctly. Pretty good. Now, my hand came out very mangled, which is actually a good thing for this tutorial because uh, it'll, I'll go over kind of my main steps in fixing that. Uh, the first is we're gonna actually set up some snapping. Uh, so right here, you have your snapping settings. You can turn that on the Shift tab. Um, and right now I have it set to face project, but there's a very, very useful tool called volume, which is volume snapping. So. Highly recommend using this. Makes positioning the fingers a lot easier. Now, with AutoRig Pro, this may not matter for a custom rig, but for AutoRig Pro, it's very important you know the names of the bones you are moving. Because when it gets all jumbled like this, it's very easy to put bones in the wrong position or on the wrong finger, um, and it will still treat it as a thumb. It actually won't really affect your ability to rig certain things unless you put the thumb in the wrong spot. But once you bring it into Unity, fingers will bend incorrectly. Now, for this, I'm just trying to move it into position. You have the base of the thumb, uh, thumb two, and thumb three. Put that at the very, very tip or so, about there. Again, that's a nice part of the volume. So it will snap it pretty nicely, um, as long as you have the right perspective. Hmm, thinking. So because this is a very stylized hand, a lot of the times what I'll do with very, very stylized hands is we will remove the last joint. Uh, from the rig because it just creates a much nicer bend because these are just very large cylinder or spherical shapes. And if it bends in the middle of that sphere, it kind of like crinkles in a way that just doesn't look correct. Um, now I can just continue to rig it like normal. Um, setting up all the bones in the right positions, and then we'll just make sure that Unity doesn't pay attention to the tips of the fingers, and everything will still bend like it's just two joints at that point, because it will only bend the first two, but not the last. Okay, on to the next bone. So here's our index. This is the base. Um, the thumb doesn't have this, but the base is basically the bone inside your hand. Um, and uh, it's very useful for some of the stretching features that AutoRig Pro has. You just wanna make sure that it's not extending outside of the hand, like into the finger. All right. 
right there, right there. So this is the first knuckle. This is the second knuckle. About there. Third and tip of finger. I have to look at my own fingers to make sure I'm doing that right. All right, so then right about there. I'm going to turn off snapping. Okay, and just generally tweak, do some final tweaking. Okay, on to the rest. So this is the middle, perfect. I'm going to put it back a ways. Just think about that. There. Might be a little bit too low. Want the want the bend to be closer to the surface top of the hand. Right up there. Snap for this one. And then the tip again. All right. Now, just like the knees, you do want a very slight bend in your bones because that again, just gives whatever sort of algorithm ends up manipulating the bones an idea of which way is it should bend. Um, you know, bones shouldn't be perfectly straight except for maybe a tail. Uh, and even then, it's probably the only object, maybe a tail or a spine, anything else like that's limb, like a limb, should have a bent. Just moving some of these up. Like so. All right. Oh, and this one is also the ring finger, so perfect. Every bone should be in the correct order now. Awesome. Okay. All right. Next, I'm just going to move these a little bit closer together, kind of in a line. Again, think of your hand. And the bones do kind of have a similar point that they start in your hand. And actually, for the wrist, we're going to move that right to the center there. Again, thankfully with the shift tab or, or snapping, we can make quick work of that. All right, that looks pretty good for the arm. Now for the final uh, step before we create the control rig um, is the face, getting that all lined up correctly. So looking at the lips here, everything's in a pretty decent spot. I think we could kind of lower this one down. Usually you want your uh, bones to be at the edge of a lip for, for the lips. A little hard to see with the bones in the way. This might be a little bit too close to the corner of the mouth. And with AutoRig Pro, we can actually automatically create even more bones along the lips. Uh, we're not going to do that just yet, but it will save us some time once we get to it. 
This is our lips roll. We we'll put it right here or so. And our other lips roll. Um, again, that's kind of an auto rig pro feature. Not very necessary for VR chat avatars. So I would feel free to ignore that. Put it in a nice position outside of the mouth. Um, but not something you really have to worry about. Now for this, you really want it to be right in the middle of your cheek. So I'm going to switch my snapping to face project and then just line it up nicely. Turn off project individual elements so it doesn't rotate. Cheek smile, just kind of where you imagine the pinch of your cheek would be. All right. Other than that, make sure the eyebrows on the eyebrow. And I think we're good to go. Um, now these here are the ears. If your character does have normal ears, like human human ears, uh, I would go ahead and line these up with them. Uh, so you would, for example, like just as an example, imagine an ear right here. I just line it up so that this is at the bottom of the ear and this is at the top of the ear. Uh, but since I will be doing something else for the large ears we have here, I'm actually going to disable this bone by just selecting it and clicking Disable with Auto Rig Pro. Well, disable. All right, so now I don't have any ear bones. We will be creating additional bones for the ears and for the tail, um, but we don't do that at this step. Oh, uh, one last thing before I forget. There's a few other bones in the face and mouth that we need to move around. And that is our teeth bones. So this is the top set of teeth and you can see that I have mesh inside the face for the teeth. I'm just gonna kind of line those up in a nice way. Additionally, we have the tongue bones. And it's a little hard to see with this view, but there is a tongue right here. And I'm gonna try to line this up with that tongue. Right about there. All right, now we are ready to do the first match to rig. Matching to rig is basically where Rig Pro takes this skeleton we've created and creates a control rig. If you're familiar with Rigify, uh, very similar, but one of the main advantages of Auto Rig Pro is that we can always go back and forth between the skeleton we are just tweaking and this control rig. So you can always edit your rig at any time and it uh, maintains any additional bones you create for it. And um, very handy. So we'll probably do that a few times just to tweak things. In fact, the first tweak I see is that uh, our IK handles for the knees, they should be way more over here. They should be right in front of the knee, not off to the side. So we're going to go back into edit, select our uh, upper leg, and turn on show IK direction, which, as you can tell, shows the direction of the IK. And you just basically want to make your leg vertical, and it'll put it in a better position. Something like that. Boom. And then back to match to rig. Nice. And uh, there are additional advantages to Auto Rig Pro, but I really am just going to be discussing them as we get to them in this process. Uh, yeah. All right. So now we have our rig.
So you can see that uh, I'm going to isolate it. You can see that individual parts of it are moving. Everything's kind of connected together already. Very handy stuff. Um, that's not good though. The hips should not be tilted. Oops. So we're going to go back into here one more time. Select these bones. I'm going to use my 3D cursor to scale it to zero on the x-axis. Perfect. All right, and once again, match to rig. One. That should be enough. Okay, unisolate. Back to looking at everything. So we now have our rig. What we want to do now is create the additional bones. So this does have to be done after you match to rig. So do not make the tail bones beforehand. You make them once you have your control rig. Uh, this is your control rig. Uh, so to add it, we're going to enter edit mode by hitting tab. Uh, and shift M, we're going to go to our final layer here, this very bottom right one. Click that. I'm going to select my uh, armature settings and turn on in front. Now, in this mode, in this I, again, in this, after the control rig is made, this is when you want to make your bones, and you also want to make them in this layer, at least at first, in the bottom right layer of your armature. And we're going to add a tail just by hitting Shift A to make the bone. We're going to rotate it and position it. So this will be our tail bone. Oh, snap. You know what? I take that back. This is going to be our ear bone. We'll come to the back to the tail in a second because I realized I should have done that at a different step. All right, so this is going to be our ear. And the reason we're doing this manually is because we want to add more bones um, than Auto Rig Pro is going to give it. Now, the important thing about adding your own custom bones to an Auto Rig Pro is your naming. So, in order to have it be imported into Unity has to be named a certain way. And all you have to do is put this CC underscore before any name. Any bone you want to automatically import or export, I should say, uh, to Unity needs to have a CC underscore before it. That is essential. And I'm going to name it ear one l the dot L, also very important for the symmetry. Uh, and now we're just going to position it right about there. Lean it forward a little bit. Make the rest of the bones. Line them up as best we can. And also change the names. This will be ear. 2.l. Very important that the dot L is at the back of it. Ear 3.l. Um, and then we're going to take the base of this little segment and parent it to the head bone. Again, you must be in the bottom right layer to do this because if you are parenting it to any other bone in any other layer, it's the wrong bone and it will not import correctly. You can change it later, but if you're getting some errors, that might be why. Now we're going to parent again the base bone to the head bone using the keep offset so it maintains this distance. If I turn on the relationship lines, we can now see that it is attached. 
Now I'm going to also select the ear segment. We're going to go to Armature, Symmetrize, and create the other side. Again, um, you'll notice that the back part of the name is now .r. The Blender cannot symmetrize any bones that don't have that naming convention. So that's very that's why I was very specific in naming it dot L so that Blender knows it is paired to this other bone. So ear two dot R is paired to ear two dot L, vice versa, for any bone. And you can see that convention through pretty much everything else. This one's not capitalized, but you can see the dot L dot R. That's what lets Blender know that these are paired symmetrical bones. All right, so ears are created. And we may add some other bones later down the line for physics, such as the chest floof and the floof on the face, maybe on the hair as well. But this is a good start. And we're going to actually go back to our edit bone. So I'm going to exit, hit tab to exit edit mode. We're going to edit the reference bones again. Um, so now we're back in the original skeleton. This is like the Auto Rig Pro uh, uh, hidden version of the rig. And we're going to add a tail here because they have a really cool setup for the tail. So we're going to hit tail. It's going to create a chain of bones that we then just position where we want it. So that looks pretty good for the tail. Got a wireframe so we get a little bit more exact. Then I will actually up the count. So I have this chain of bones selected and I go to limb options. We're going to turn it up to, I say, eight. Bam. Um, and voila. And I'll just turn the tip of it down a little bit. So that's right there. Okay, perfect. And again, thanks to the magic of Auto Rig Pro, I'll hit match to rig, and it's automatically going to turn that tail into some with control handles and some nice rigged features that we can play with, animate. So for example, the base here, if I rotate it, you'll see it automatically curls the tail. Very useful and easy to create animations with. All right, so now we have all the basic bones we'll want to use for our rig set up. And the next step is now to just skin or um, parent the mesh, our body, to this armature. So first select the body, then select your armature. Normally, if you have a custom rig, you're not using AutoRig Pro, you'd hit Control P, Armature Deform with Automatic Weights. Um, that's a decent way to do it, but AutoRig Pro has a very good skinning feature called voxelized uh, skinning. And this gives you much more accurate results, a lot less cleanup. There's definitely still cleanup involved, but it is very preferable in my opinion. Um, the only additional step we're going to take before skinning it is uh, with this select, I'm going to hit Control, Tab, or actually just Tab, so we can look at the rig one more time. Shift M to go to that final layer and put in front on. Why all that? <laughs> because actually, we'll do Shift M. We do want these layers. So the first two and the third one selected because I want to select all the teeth here. These are the teeth bones and the tongue bones. So those are the bones we have selected and I'm actually going to invert this selection. So um, that way we can actually remove those from the rigging. It'll just be a little bit easier if they're not included at the start. So I'm going to do selected bones only. I don't want 
the teeth or the tongue to influence any of the weight painting on the face. Um, we just found it would be a little bit easier that way. All right, and now we get to the fun part. We hit bind. We have voxelized selected. We've uh, identified which bones we want. And now we're going to bind. Sometimes it takes a little while. <laughs> so we're just waiting on it to load right now. Okay, perfect. So it is done. And now we can select our rig, control tab to pose mode, and then we can start moving them around. Wow. Wow. Very cool. And always a fun one, the tail. Don't worry about the, the small tufts. So I have my mesh set up in a certain way. Let's go ahead and disable these for now. Um, okay. We'll go over how to very easily rig or attach additional objects to your mesh, to your rig, um, uh, towards the end. And it'll include those. The method I use to attach them to the character can easily be transferred to clothing, uh, any sort of object that is touching the body or flush with the body. Clothing and hair is especially useful for it. All right. So now that we've done that, we're going to enter kind of the dreaded part of this process, which is actually weight painting. So. There are a few major problems with um, weight painting in Blender. And one of the biggest ones that I've already solved is being able to automatically get your weights from one side of the mesh to the other. Uh, I, I personally think that it's essential to start your rigging, your weight painting with a mirror modifier, even if you want some small differences at the end, uh, it's better to get 80, 99% of it done with your mirror modifier, then apply it and make those final changes you're looking for. This just saves a lot of time, a lot of headache. So um, if you're able to, again, I would just recommend apply every modifier, your subdivision and your mirror, or usually it's a mirror then subdivision, then delete your mesh in half, put the mirror modifier back on, and you're good to go. All right. So to get into here, you just select your armature first, then shift select your mesh. Then when you enter weight paint, you now have access to your armature and your mesh at the same time. Uh, you'll notice that if I went back out, I selected just the mesh, entered weight paint. The armature is not selectable. I cannot interact with the skeleton in any way. But if I select it first, then select the mesh, enter weight paint, I actually have access to these uh, bones now. For example, if I click the tail with control click, you can see me selecting control, then click, I can actually select bones visually instead of going through your list of vertex groups, and we can begin to make some edits. So first for the tail, um, I'm going to select that bone, enter edit mode, select the tail with L, which is select linked, and switch it to scene, because I've already, I have a scene line right here. It's a little hard to see. Let me just, this red line right here, it separates the uh, body from the tail on my UVs. But since I have that line, I can actually use a select link with the seam um, delimit, and it'll isolate my selection. 
Now that I've done that, I'm going to invert the selection. Sorry, select faces, then invert the selection. And we can go into vertex groups. I have the bone, it matches the bone I just selected. And I'm going to hit remove from the highlighted vertices, which now removes any influence this tailbone had on my body. And we can go ahead and select the blur, just blend it back in just a little. So there's some influence, but it's no longer that very intense uh, look that it had before. All right, one down. Uh, I don't see much influence by moving this bone and noticing that nothing else on the body is moving. I can assume that no other bone on the tail is influencing the body. Um, if you had done automatic weight painting, most likely there still would have been that bleed from your other bones here on the body. That's where AutoRig Pro's voxelized skinning really comes in handy and saves you time. It's a little bit cleaner. It has a better idea of the separation of the meshes, of the bones from the mesh, <laughs> if that makes sense. All right. So tail's pretty much good. Let's just test it a little bit. One thing I do like to do is I'm going to hold shift now. I'm going to control click the first one, then shift select the rest of the bones. So you can see that they're still highlighted white. Boom. And then we're going to go weights, smooth, uh, selected pose bones. And that way it's going to smooth all the bones I have selected. I'll make it iterate twice, maybe three times, and that'll just help them uh, help have their influence uh, intersect or overlap more. That's very, you want more overlapping influence on things that need to bend really smoothly, like tails or tubes, spines, uh, anything that needs a very smooth bend should have a very smooth overlap. Uh, it's when you need things to bend sharply that you should have a very sharp boundary with. <laughs> okay, tail looking good. I think we can move on from that. Uh, I'm now going to target uh, the, the leg here. Mm. Okay, so right now these bones I've been able to select in this view. But to start accessing the weight paints for the rest of the leg, I need to include this last layer. So I'm going to hold down shift, click it, so I can include it in this view here. Um, I do prefer the wireframe view when weight painting. It certainly gets cluttered visually, but I think if you mess around with it for a while, you'll get used to it. Okay, now I've gone ahead and control clicked this bone here. And we can see its influence. And if we want to see it move, the reason I kept these other bones in my selection is I can control click this one and see how that actually bends. So if I put the bone over here, kind of pose it a little bit. Now when I go back to my upper leg bone, I can really see how it's pulling on the groin here. Um, and to prevent that influence, we can just Set our weight to zero, strength to one, and pull it out of there. Now, you may notice that it's only doing half of it. And that may seem odd to you until you remember that we do have a mirror modifier on here. So interestingly enough, with the mirror modifier and weight painting, you can only influence the weight of the mesh that actually exists. So in the eyes of the mirror modifier, uh, only this right half of the mesh exists. It's, it's the original mesh before the modifier. So if I want to get rid of this side, I have to select the bone on the other side of the body, and now I can paint it out. In fact, I can use Alt, Drag, Alt, Alt and Drag, kind of paints selection. Um, okay, yeah. So yeah, we'll do that back to the other one. 
and we'll smooth it out a little bit and then go to our root bone, which is this upside down bone. And we would like to increase the strength of its influence in the groin in order to prevent such strong uh, deformation from the leg. So just slowly paint that in. Um, now, since this is a center bone, this bone has no pair. It's just one of a kind. When I paint with this bone, that weight does appear on both sides of the mesh, uh, which is very, very useful. So the mirror modifier, Blender knows you have a mirror modifier. And when you're weight painting with one, it is correctly assigning the weights uh, as you go through your process. All right. Um, I would like a little bit less intense weight there. So I'm setting the weight to zero now. Painting it out a little bit, Oops, not that much. And maybe smoothing it as well. I think the smooth brush is probably the most important part of weight painting in Blender. It usually helps you fix <laughs> a lot of uh, the problems you'll, you're going to find. All right. So only part way through the process, but we've already gotten the leg to behave quite a bit better. We can still see some pulling on this side of the leg. And I'm assuming that's still from this bone or perhaps even it's this bone. So the lower leg bone. Um, In order to push this influence down, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the alt drag uh, weight painting. So when I have my brush selected and I hold alt and then I click and drag, it actually paints a line of influence in the direction of this. So a little easier to visualize if I do it over the weight. You can see how it's dragging the weight in a direction kind of like a, a gradient in that direction. So uh, very, very useful to quickly paint. And it does project through your mesh. So when I paint on this side, it's also just as directly affecting the other side of the mesh. And again, this is another major reason I use a mirror modifier for this process, because this tool specifically, the alt drag, will not work, it will not be mirrored automatically in any other setting. You cannot use it, you cannot use it and have it automatically update on the other side without a mirror modifier. I don't know if that's a bug in Blender or what, but it's the only way I've found to be able to get that to work. Anyway, we wanna paint out some of that influence in the groin and I'll move it down the leg a little bit. So I'm just Alt, drag painting it out. I want to select the other bone, uh, other side of the bone, and then just alt drag to completely remove any influence on the other side of the body. All right, so now when I move around, we can see that there's no wiggle on the other thigh. Whew. Oh, we're talking so much. All right, so continuing, let's go ahead and get our knee in better shape. So just as I was saying before, if you want something to bend smoothly, you need to smooth it. So that's what I'm gonna do on the front of the knee. And if you want something to bend sharply, you need to make a sharp transition. So we're gonna paint out here up to the crevice of the knee smooth it a little bit and then do the same for the next bone, the uh, upper shin. We'll make a sharp cut here, very lightly smooth it, and then do a much stronger smoothing on the front. And now if we go to the side view, I'm just hitting numpad three to go to the side view. You'll see that we get this really sharp bend to the point where it's intersecting, which is okay. That's an okay thing to happen in a mesh. Um, it's intersecting right there. 
but the knee, front of the knee bends very, very smoothly. Uh, yeah, which looks very nice. If you want a little bit softer blend, you could just smooth this out a little bit more just so it compresses a little bit nicer. But that's the general rule of thumb. And again, most importantly in this comparison between the two is the overlapping part of it. You know, we still have a little bit of blur, but the overlap goes up further here and here versus here where it meets at a sharper point. Uh, yeah, there we go. Nice leggy. Okay. Now we'll do the lower leg. We're going to blend out its influence on uh, the ankle, just like that or so. I'm going to select this uh, little semicircle because it Auto Rig Pro gives you a nice little tippy toe feature. As we compress it, com compress it. Uh, there's too much squishing on the ankle for me or, or the heel. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to alt drag, remove that influence, and then uh, see what we've got going here. And that looks pretty good. Now it maintains its shape a lot better. Let's smooth it just a little bit though, so it doesn't crumple, just compresses. And this is not really a pose you're going to see very often in VR chat. You usually the mesh armature is not bending that much, even in full body. Okay, now for the uh, ankle portion or the foot. <laughs> This is the, your toes are the front segment, and then uh, this is like your actual foot. We're going to paint out the toes because we want those to be controlled by the toe bone, which will turn up the weight, paint it in. But the tricky part about bringing the toes is sometimes you get the rest of the body. So I'm going to paint out alt drag to make sure I remove that influence up there. And now we're doing. Quite good. All right. Look at that. Dancer. Dancer and prancer. OK. Now uh, we first fixed the, the front part, the front of the groin. Now we're going to fix the butt. Uh, so once again, going to this upper leg bone. We can see its influence here. We're going to paint out this influence on the butt cheek then soften it. So it still has a little bit of pull. Then we'll go to the root. And I would say that looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit less. So erase it once again. Blur it once again. Just trying to find that right balance. Side view. Okay. Again, it's okay if it compresses. All right. So leg done, tail done. Now what we're gonna look on look at is our torso. So the hips, pretty good. We've already done kind of the bottom part of the hips. Uh, now we'd like to uh, check its influence along the torso. So to do that, I'll grab these control bones and we're gonna rotate. All right. Looks a little bit odd because I'm mostly rotating the second, which would be, um, this would be spine one, this would be spine two. So spine one, when we rotate it, we really don't want the groin or the hips moving at all. Pretty much, you know, if you feel uh, your own hips, the pel your pelvis bone, you know, that's not moving very much when you move, twist your body. That stays pretty still. And we would like our body to reflect that. So in this view, with the spine one selected, I'm going to alt drag and push that influence up kind of mirroring the pelvis bone 
And now when we rotate, we get a much uh, better deformation. All right. I don't mind the roots influence going up. So let's move on to the chest bone. Here, what we want to mimic are the ribs. And that's usually what I keep in mind when I'm alt dragging and painting out this section is that it kind of has a rib cage like vibe. Something like this, this. And then when we rotate the top one, we can see it has a little bit of a pinch there. We can blend this one a little bit though. All right. So that's mainly the spine. Pretty simple. It's a tube. You don't really have to worry too much about a tube. Tube. All right. So I'm grabbing this handle here, which is for the shoulder. We're going to rotate vertically, and you can see how much it influences, which is way too much in my opinion. We don't want this other pec moving at all. So we're going to select the bone. Actually, we'll select the other one and alt drag, remove all the influence there. Whew. And then we'll go back to the other side and just alt drag to kind of minimize its influence as much as we can. We still need it. You can't remove it completely, um, but we do want to minimize its influence on like kind of the lower rib cage and then onto the arm itself. Already we have some better uh, rotation. You can see it's just the mainly the pec moving. Uh, still some influence on the arm. Okay, back to here. Weight paint, I'm gonna push it pretty much all the way out of the pec if I can. Yeah, much better. I prefer that. Let's smooth it. Wham, bam. Okay. So as we move the hand controller around, you can see a few things getting really funky. Uh, <clears throat> So generally moving back and forth uh, or forward and backward is going to be pretty, pretty okay with your arm. Not too much is going to go weird there. It's mostly dependent on your shoulder. But you'll notice just that as we move up, that pulls the rib cage out. And that's two, two problems or two bones influencing it. Excuse me. First is your ribs, your, uh, chest bone needs to have a stronger influence here. So we'll go ahead and select that with control, right click on the uh, weight paint, paint it in to have a stronger grab there and maybe a little bit on the chest too. And then blur that and that, perfect. And next is this rotation bone, which is the upper arm bone and We'll go to weight, zero, and remove that. Perfect. You can kind of push it out of the arm a little bit. The upper shoulder can be a little bit tricky. All right, let's take a look again. All right, still too much pull. So we need to paint out, grab the little rotation arrow. We're going to hit zero, paint it out a bunch. It's pretty strong. Then blur it. So we get, look at that, much smoother. Helps keep that initial position a lot better. So I do see this little spot right here moving. Perfect. Okay. 
Now, additionally, the shoulder here um, is loses a lot of definition. Uh, you just want to kind of lightly smooth that back in. It's hard to get it perfect. You would pretty much need a, a second bone to make it perfect, but that's a good start. All right. Next, we'll push back the influence of these this twist bone a little bit. And I do make my Auto Rig Pro with twist bones. And then we also have the uh, elbow, elbow pit. I don't know what the term for this would be. But just like the knee, we're going to make a sharp blend here because we want it to pinch. Bada boom. Oops. Same here. Now when we grab our little control handle, go to an above view, we can see that it sharply compresses. Good. Sometimes, depending on the type of avatar you're making, you may want a sharper elbow. With how round this and soft looking this character is, stylized really, um, I'm not too concerned with that. Um, but just like the knee, you could either blend it to have a really smooth bend or push the influence of maybe this bone over here and remove the influence of this bone if you wanted a sharper bend. All right. I'm going to undo that because I don't want that. And we're going to move on to our hand. So just grabbing our control handle and rotating it, we can see some unwanted deformation. Go here. This is pretty good much improvement to be had with the uh, uh, twist bone. And on the thumb though, that influence extends way too far into the wrist. So I'm gonna pa uh, paint that out with zero. And then smooth. All right. Now comes the tricky part. So one cool thing about AutoRig Pro is the hands. Generally, they're weighted pretty well, um, but you can select this top circle and hit S for scale in order to create the rotation of the joint, of the, of the finger itself, which is very, very cool. Uh, you can do that for all of these. Uh, you notice that there's, there's definitely some weight painting errors. We'll get to that in a second, but the rotation is nice and uh, well done. Okay, so what I like to do in order to remove influence from one finger from the rest of the fingers, in this case the thumb, is select a ring with a Shift-Alt-Select, boom, boom, on an edge, and then control plus to get most of it selected. And then control I to invert your selection. So now, when I have selected this bone, I can go to my vertex groups tab and remove. So now this bone for sure does not influence anything else. Same for this one. We can see a little bit of blur there. Let's just remove that. We don't want it. All right, and we just continue. So next bone, tab, let's select this. Actually, I'm gonna select a little further over here. So plus, 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 plus. Okay, in 
convert that selection. Um, and we're control minus. Yeah, no, this is good. It's good. I don't want it to go over there. Correct. Remove. Bam. Remove. And and now when I scale this, it is just affecting. These bones are just affecting this bone, though. I can't say the same for the middle finger. Okay. Just continue the process. Next, grab this one. Plus, 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 plus. That's good. Invert. Select this bone. Remove. Then this bone. Remove. Then this bone. We're just going to go really quickly through this, do the rest of them. Remove. Remove. And remove. Awesome. And last finger, this one. Invert. Select the bone. Remove the selection. Rinse. Repeat. All right. So now, generally, these do bend very nicely. Look at that. Very cute. Very, very nice. And it's just a nice, quick way to isolate that influence. Though, we did have now a very sharp cutoff. I would recommend, for sure, going back and just blending out this influence. Um, We could have done like a smooth operation for after selecting all the bones. That's okay. All right. Now, there are a few other handles we can select here. If you remember when we were initially putting together the skeleton, there were the basically bones that are in the, the hand itself. And those are represented by uh, this oblong kind of circle one, or these little circle ones here. And so you can see kind of the influence they have on the hand. Some of them are too far, so I don't want it going into the wrist. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of alt drag to paint out that selection, especially there. Uh, and then I'll smooth it. Now you may wonder why there are bones there in the first place. It's because you can rotate it out to kind of do a palm spread or compression. Uh, very, very useful for animation. Uh, I even rotate it a little bit. So if you were to use this rig for animations, it's got a lot of features to do it nice and easily. OK, sip of water. Next. Oops, select the rig, select the mesh, control tab, weight paint. So we've got the uh, leg done, got the tail, torso, and arm done. Next, we're going to focus on the head. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll start with the neck. Usually the neck kind of pushes down into the head, or the, sorry, the chest a little bit. And we can see that happening right now, where it kind of pushes the uh, whatever this is called, down. So let's grab the neck bone directly and just paint that out. Awesome. Then we'll grab this weight, make it a bit stronger around these parts. Smooth, of course. And that's improved. All right, that looks good. Now the head. So for the head, we're going to 
remove the influence on the neck because it's kind of a sharp, it's very clear where the shape is. Uh, thankfully, it makes it very straightforward to rig. And then, of course, smooth. Then we're just going to rotate this. A lot of bending here. I don't want that coming from the head. I'm going to alt drag, remove that influence on the kind of uh, jaw there. Lessened a little bit. Um, all right, I think that's pretty good. Let's look at a few of the other bones. We'll start with the big ones. We'll go with the ear. That is way too much. Way, way, way too much influence. So let's alt drag and remove it from the section we don't want it to be affecting, especially like the other sides of the head. Even this is still too much. We want it to, we really want it to bend where the root or start bending where the root of the bone is. So if we go ahead and rotate this, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Maybe a little bit less, and we'll blur it. And then we'll also make the influence of the head itself a lot stronger at the base of the ear. Blur that as well. And rotate it. Yeah, that looks a lot better. It's kind of pulling on the top of the head, though. So once again, back to the head. Paint in some influence right here. And this one's got a little bit too much influence, the second ear bone. So we'll alt drag to paint that out, blur it. And definitely don't want this one to be influencing much further than that. All right. Let's take that out again. <laughs> No, thank you. Better. All right. That looks a lot better. OK. So now we can focus, start focusing on some of the smaller bones. Um, so we have all these face bones here. We got the eyebrow, eyebrow bones. And generally, for all of these, you can pretty much get rid of their influence. Usually, it's a little, it's a little much. Uh, and we can go in instead and just right where they're at, we're going to put a really hot spot of influence. So we want it to be the most influential right where it is and not anywhere else. Like it shouldn't be pulling on the ear. So you can just pretty easily go in, add that hot spot in, and then we'll select all of the eyebrow bones, go to weights, smooth. Um, maybe we'll just do two smooths and a little bit, a little bit of factor. No, all right, take that back. A little bit of expand. All right. And so that gives something similar to what we had, but a little bit easier to uh, get it centered properly. Because like we really don't need it to be influencing the top of the skull that much. It is a stylized character though. Going in, blurring out some stuff. Perfect. Now, we're going to get to the hard stuff, which is the eyes. And just kind of like we were just saying, really could remove a lot of this influence. So I'm going to kind of shrink this one so it's not pulling so far to the left. Smooth it see what it's doing. 
do that again. Actually, I'm going to hit Shift M here. Open up my armature layers and just click just the first one. And that way, so we're, we're, we can remove the larger bones from our view. Oh, sorry. Shift M. Um, this, this one. The second one. All right. And this, again, is to visualize the influence of the bones on our eyelids. Uh, a lot of them, just like the eyebrows, have way too much influence, or it's too far. Now, they should have strong influence, but usually it's a little farther than it needs to be. And just like anything you want to bend smoothly, it should have a decent amount of overlap with the other ones, with the other bones. Uh, the exception being the corners of the eyes. So this is part of the, th the three bones that make up the upper eyelid. We do not want any of the upper bone, upper eyelid to influence the lower eyelid at all. So I would recommend just being very sharp and cutting that off, usually with an alt drag, you can blur a little bit. Really, again, don't want it to go much further than that. Like that at the most. Then the corner of the eye. But we don't want the influence down the muscle. Paint that out a little bit. We do want this to overlap softly with the other bones. Uh, but as we get now to the lower eyelid, again, we're going to remove its influence. Uh, in fact, we can see its influence on the mouth, which it really don't. Oops. So I'm just alt dragging to really evenly remove that influence. Excuse me. Okay, so still smoothing out, trying to get the eyelid looking good. Uh, a main reason we want this very sharp uh, influence here is just as we've been Referencing sharp in the past, this corner of the eye should sharply bend. All right. Now let's go ahead and move some of the, we definitely don't want the eye pulling on the corner of the mouth. So we're going to really limit the influence of this one. Smooth it out on the eyelid itself. Here also, let's remove some of that influence. Smooth. And this is the other corner of the eyeball. This one, the, the corners of the eyes don't move too much, so it's okay if it, their influence is a bit bigger, because you're, you're really not going to be moving them uh, in the same way that the upper and lower eyelids are going to be moving. But good to keep in mind. All right, let's limit some of the influence there. Blur. Blur. Okay. Now, to verify the movement itself, I'm going to bring back that first layer because it has these rectangular handles here. And moving them allows the eye to, it moves the lower lid bones, or in this case, the upper lid bones. All right. So we can see that a lot of work is needed for it to come. Press nicely. Usually I verify the motion of these by how well they can um, blink. So I'm just going to blend that, so give it kind of a an accordion a blending. That's a good way to think about it. An accordion should fold up. One. And the other way to make it fold is to take the corner of the eye and push its influence up.
All right. Um, with such a stylized character too, probably gonna heavily rely on blend shapes, but we'll try to make the most of this rig that we can. For now, we're doing what we can. Doing what we can. All right, so let's go ahead and try to smooth some of this out. It's really nice being able to pose the bones and paint them at the same time, because it gives you a much more intuitive understanding of how they are working together. Ooh, that, one's, that one's pretty rough. I think that this one, pretty much it can only influence the lid itself. Any other influence is probably going to be too much. It should really only be affecting the lid of the eye and nothing else. Again, we're probably going to rely very heavily on a blend shape to get this working properly. All right. Squish. Just trying to get it to blend as smoothly as possible. The more overlap, the better, in order to smooth something. Smooth. Take this out of the corner of the eye. This one we're going to grow. All right. <laughs> All right. Other aspect of it is having the eyebrow and the head have a much stronger influence on the pieces we don't want to move as far. So we have those. Let's also get them head bones involved. We'll select a little bit here, a little bit there. Mostly just a general selection with a lot of blur. And making sure that this is weighted out. Might have to do another a loop cut as well. Let's do weight point one. That way we can be very precise. Alt G. The reason I'm working so hard to do this is I do find it preferable to have a better rig than a better than a blend shape. I'd rather be able to create the shapes I want to with a rig. 
not always feasible, but definitely, in my opinion, preferable. Oops. Okay. Any other way we can correct that? Just getting pulled down a little bit too far. Or just unevenly. There must be something else influencing it. Ooh, let's see. Okay. Uh, we have the jaw. Tongue shouldn't have any influence. Jaw. I don't see the jaw having much of an impact. The head it didn't make it. Let's see. Looks like evil Mickey Mouse <laughs> right now. Okay, sorry, I'm distracted. But yeah, just working, working, working. You just gotta kind of work it. It's gotta be this, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Just so smooth above, how to make it smooth while it bends. Challenge. Okay. 
can also rotate it while it bends. I think the other part of it is that we're going to have the lower lid come up and close as well. The lower lid's doing a lot better, and if it's deformation. Look at that, so clean, so smooth. Okay, so yeah, decent rig. I think we're gonna have to rely on that, rely on blend shapes for the rest of it. Now we're gonna focus on getting the mouth rigged because it is just as messed up. Um, so to do that, we need to make a good selection. Uh, easiest way is just to kind of lasso select, just using B, drag, to select as much of the top jaw as I can. It is nice to leave a little gap on the lips, you know, just a slight opening in the mouth. Um, I find that when there is a very strong or close together selection. The close together vertices, it's much harder to work with. So let's mind the gap. All right. So this is kind of the upper section of the face. We could include more with that selection if we wanted to. But the main point is to be able to select the lips here. So this is one lip, this is the upper lip on that side. And invert our selection. And let's say on this selection, we're gonna remove that influence. Or we really should do a center one. Remove this one, remove. Just all the top lips we're removing, and then we'll grab a bottom lip, invert our selection, and do the same thing. And that just allows for really clean removal of that influence. There we go. And now when we grab the jaw, bah, we'll still get a little bit. What would that be from? That would probably be from the jawbone itself. So if we turn on Shift M, grab that final layer, select this bone, see a little bit of weight on some areas, like right there, which we don't want. How about these other bones? Anything influencing this section? That is the, I don't know what bone that is. That is the chin. Okay, that's the chin that's influencing it. So let's do an alt drag, remove that influence. And now it's pretty good.
Nice. Mom, 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 mom. <laughs> All right. So, pretty good. Let's go ahead and start cleaning up the bones. So, we got this lip here. It should have that selection. This one's pretty good. Maybe a little bit strong up top, but overall, it'll look pretty good. Something like that instead. Maybe less of the nose. The middle lip. This one's going to compress oddly because the nose bone here is very strong. Lose that. I'm going to weight it out a little bit vertically on both of these. Overall, I think that's pretty good. Then our lower lip. Funnily enough, does not have any influence right at the center. We want influence there. Now, with the lower lip, there's less space for it to move. Now, we don't want it moving too much farther than the bottom of the jaw. So, just be very careful with how it blends. Something like that should allow us to reveal the teeth, which we'll rig in just a moment for now. Ignore them. Grab the other side. Mirror it, wait out the section that isn't lit. Blur it. Blur this section. This has way too much influence on the lower jaw and inside the mouth. Again, I'm just flipping my selection to the other bone in order to alt drag out that influence um, that I can't touch through this bone by itself. The mirrored, mirrored influence. All right. Here, just wait out the jaw. The, uh, Corner of the mouth, not as concerned with. This should not influence the eyelid. Neither should this one. Furries are a blessing. Oh, well, thank you, Neku, Neku, Neki W. Welcome, welcome to the stream. We're working on a little tutorial on how to rig VR chat avatars, which is what this work will be. But I hope you're having a fantastic Tuesday. Thanks for coming by. Paint that out. Paint that out. And let's go ahead and also grab the center head. And we want to extend its influence to the uh, roof of the mouth. This. To just limit any influence that the lips might have a little too much of. Bam. Then blur that out and that out. Bam. All right. And the jaw is pretty good. I think we'll want a little bit of a stronger influence just right here or so.
All right. Let's exit the weight paint mode so we can view the armature working and a little bit easier to uh, gauge. And look at that. Look at that. So happy. Okay. So generally, that is most of the weight painting on the body done. Um, now we're going to do a few of the major uh, secondary features, which are the eyes, teeth, tongue, and um, oh, it's basically the fur tufts for the body. Uh, you can use very similar method to weight paint the clothing to the body. So I think if you are wanting to know how to do that, you'll want to pay attention. Um, but let's get into getting that the teeth working. So um, I basically have this done already. I'm going to hide that. Actually, yeah. Uh, exit my isolated view with slash. Uh, hide the body. Boom. And we're going to look at just the teeth for now. Uh, so first thing to do, select both the teeth, the tongue, select the armature. And we're going to parent to it with uh, just an armature, actually with empty groups, empty groups. Okay. Now that we have done that, select the rig, select the upper teeth, and control P, weight paint. All right. So now we're weight painting just this upper teeth. If your teeth, when you're doing this, are not separate, pretty easy to do. You just enter... Uh, edit mode and press P to separate whatever selection you want. As long as you're not ripping your mesh apart, um, this is a very useful way to uh, weight paint things in isolation. So if you just want to do just the eyes, select that, remove it from the mesh it is, you could always add it back pretty easily. Uh, okay, but we're weight painting and we want to go to the final layer here, because that's where our teeth bones and tongue bones are. We'll start with this one, the C teeth top. And I'm going to do weight paint one, weight of one, strength of one, alt drag over, uh, like so. And so you'll see that the kind of middle of the teeth are painted. Then we'll select the edge one of the top row of teeth. And we'll go the other direction from the outside in. Um, and since it's mirrored, this one is updated automatically. All right. Next, we'll exit weight paint back to object mode. Select the rig again, select the bottom teeth, and we're going to do that exact same process just with the bottom teeth here. Drag out the middle one. This is the bottom teeth, teeth bot X. And then we're gonna get the side one, teeth bot L. Drag in, voila, teeth are rigged. It is really that simple. Um, and I really recommend separating these objects because if they're all merged together, and it's just kind of a vertex soup, and you're going to have no idea what part is which. Just pull things apart as you can uh, to work on them a little bit easier. Okay, teeth are done. I'm going to hide those. Now we're going to do the tongue. Boom, boom, control tab, weight paint. And these are the tongue bones here. You can see me select them. Tongue one. And I'm just going to drag out the weight paint. And I'll select the middle one. We're going to drag it all the way. I'm going to actually start from here to there. And then hit set it to zero to remove its influence from the back of the tongue. And then from the front, from here to there. Perfect. All right. I'm going to unhide everything and play around with the rig a little bit. 
So now that we've done that, everything is parented, and now we've got the teeth working. Got a really nice rig. You can make goofy little expressions <laughs> already, which is super fun. Definitely one of the joys of weight painting is getting to move around your little puppet and make goofy expressions. Uh, and since we've already rigged the lips, you can see how we would start doing certain expressions. Um, yeah, pretty fun stuff. Okay, now let's get the eyes rigged. So I'm gonna select the eyes. We're gonna parent it to the armature with empty groups. This one will do slightly differently. I'm using a mirror modifier, so I can just select the mesh we have, go to my vertex groups. These are all empty because I parented with empty groups. We want to find the left eye. Select here and assign. Boom. And now it's a little hard to see in this view, so I'll switch to wireframe, but they're both working correctly. The eyes are orbiting. You can see I can move just that one and just that one because Blender knows what to do with a mirror and then a rig modifier set up like that. All right, so that's all the small bits done for the, the face. Oh, sorry, um, I take that back. <laughs> we have one more. We're gonna do this one exactly like um, the eyes. We're gonna select it, Control P, Empty Groups. Uh, tab A, select everything, but this time we're going to weight it to uh, the head. Boo! Assign. Now we've got the head weighted. Grab the top bone and you can see everything's moving. All right. Now that we've done that, I'm going to hide a few things here. And we're going to focus on getting our eyebrows rigged. Now they have a mirror modifier. Um, what we're going to use for this process is another add-on. This one is free though. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what that is. It is called Mesh Data Transfer. Uh, I highly recommend this add-on. Uh, it is free. Uh, it is worth getting for sure. Um, again, this is Mesh Data Transfer for Blender. Uh, <laughs> there's not many products on Gumroad that have five stars. This one is certainly worth it. It saves you a ton of time. Uh, so what does it do? Well, what we're able to do is transfer between different objects some form of data, a few types of data. So to find this add-on once it's installed, it's in the Mesh Data Transfer uh, Vertex tab, Object Data Properties tab. And with the eyebrows selected, we wanna target getting data from the body. Uh, so we're gonna transfer data from the body to the eyebrows, though that selection has to be reversed. We have to select the eyebrows in order to target the body. Now, the key setup for this is that your transform here has to be zeroed out, or it has to be exactly the same with all these values as your um, main mesh that you're transferring from. It's just easiest to zero everything out. Usually I just do Control A, apply all transforms. It immediately zeroes out all this information. So let's do that for uh, the eyebrows right now. Control A, all transforms. Boom, done. Uh, so make sure everything's zeroed out before you attempt the mesh data transfer or it will not work properly. Um, now that we've done that, specifically what we want are the vertex groups. There's a few other things we can transfer. Vertex groups is mainly what I use this for. <coughs> so. We'll just click it, bam. Then 
Guybrows now have the mesh data transfer, and it's transferred through proximity. So whatever the eyebrow is touching on the body mesh, that is where it's getting the vertex group data. So that's why we have the eyebrows here. All I have to do is parent this eyebrow mesh to our armature with an armature deform, and now it's working. Very simple, very straightforward. This, that exact process that I just went through is the easiest way to rig clothing for your avatar. I'll probably do another tutorial just for that process. Uh, it is hands down the easiest possible way to rig clothing for your avatar. And yeah, <laughs> there, there's really nothing else. Uh, all right, and we're actually gonna repeat that process now with our tufts. Uh, so these tufts here are the little fur strands that we've placed around the body. I'm gonna hide the rig right now in order to give it a lot of fluffiness. Um, since they're kind of secondary objects, I save them for the very end to do. Um, now before I do it though, because of the modifiers that I have in place, I have to apply the modifiers on my main, the mirror modifier on my body mesh to do this. So that's the only caveat here. Um, before I do that, I'm actually gonna make a backup copy. Uh, I usually organize my copies like this, call this pre uh pre tuft rigging safe all right now that we've done that i'll apply that mirror modifier um and then we'll select our tufts here so actually let's just select the tufts and isolate them so a little bit easier to, to work with here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of the ones that are using our mirror modifier. So that's any that aren't exactly centered, which is most of them. Just pull, pulling it away so I can see. Boom, boom, oops, boom. Um, okay, so that's all of our mirrored ones. Wait. Actually, I think I can just select them all and hit Q uh, mesh. Yeah, that works fine. And then we'll just combine them together. Well, now they're just one object. Okay, so <laughs> I was kind of going down one path with selecting one half. I don't need to do that. I just hit Q, or sorry, that's my end of my quick favorites. Let, let me back up and redo that. Um, oops. So, uh, so I selected all of them with the isolation. I could just hit A to select all of them. And we're just going to go to object, convert to mesh so that just applies all modifiers and makes them so boom meshed and then i just select one of them Control j uh, which just combines the meshes and there we go now we just have to do that first before we uh, uh, transfer the data but now that we've done that we'll do the same thing again making sure everything's zeroed out. Boom, boom, select the body, transfer vertex groups. Um, one additional thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to weight paint, weights, smooth, all groups. And that, so that smooth all the vertex groups. Then we'll just combine them with the body. All right.
And in fact, everything now we are going to combine at the bottom. So all of these other objects, we're going to mesh them well, just one at a time, confirming that their modifiers work correctly. Bada boom, boom. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Boom. Combine. Because ideally, in VR chat, your character is just one mesh. Um, you can always assign materials separately. But that is rigging in Blender for a VR chat avatar. Um, now, uh, the or that's that's the weight painting. <laughs> the final step is getting your avatar into uh, Unity. So we've gone through all the steps. We've created custom bones with the ears. Um, we've created a tail. Oh, and because we've named everything properly, we are actually able to export our custom bones, which again are those ear bones up here, right here, which are named cc underscore ear 2.l 1, 3. Uh, and now with AutoRig Pro, we can go ahead and export this. Just a little cleanup here. I'm going to move my just organize my hierarchy here. And AutoRig Pro has a fun little feature where you can rename your rig on the fly. So I'm going to select the rig, set character name, and hate it. And as well, instead of the mesh being named Cade body, it should just be named body. Another best practice because you can share your animations easily if uh, the mesh is named body. Okay, so there we go. Um, now this does not go over face rigging. I'll probably do that in a separate video. Uh, this is just body rigging uh, integrated into VR chat. So I'm going to go through the process of exporting it to VR chat, what I do to test in VR chat, um, some basic Fizzbone setup, and then we're going to end the video for now and my stream. <laughs> I do also stream at uh, Sam Detter at, on Twitch. So to export here, you have to have your rig selected. And we just go File, Export, Auto Rig Pro FBX. So there's the standard FBX that Blender has, but with Auto Rig Pro, I definitely recommend using these settings. Um, now I already have the avatar open in um, Unity. This is the unrigged version. I was just testing, getting textures on the character. Uh, the easiest way to get your folder is just to open, show an explorer, and copy the path. <coughs> and then back into Blender, we're going to paste that path. And this is what we're going to overwrite, Caden Avi. Now, the AutoRig Pro export has a few features, a lot more features on the side here. But one huge advantage of AutoRig Pro is they have a direct to Unity humanoid avatar export settings. Blender does not have this by default. This is one of the main advantages of buying AutoRig Pro. Um, so I'm going to include the twist bones. I prefer having twist bones. Generally, if you're looking for a clean avatar, it's recommended. Um, we can also go ahead and bake axis conversion. Um, that The axis conversion was broken in older versions of AutoRig Pro, but it seems to be working fine now. And then in miscellaneous, one of the other huge advantages of AutoRig Pro, uh, which I don't utilize quite as often because I like to apply all my modifiers, but should you not want to apply them, you have that ability and you can even apply them over your shape keys. Blender and many add-ons cannot 
do this, specifically applying the modifiers over shape keys, exporting modifiers with your shape keys. Even in Blender alone, you cannot apply modifiers with shape keys on a mesh. So AutoRig Pro, I don't know what magic they're doing, but this is the only atom I've seen where this actually works well. Um, and frankly, this feature alone makes it worth your money. <laughs> it, it could do nothing else, and I would pay money just for this one feature. Highly recommended. I am not sponsored by them. I'm just a fan. Uh, but I don't need it for me because I do not have any modifiers besides the armature modifier on my avatar. So there's no reason to apply any of this. Um, so a few other features that you can use. All I really want to do is make sure that back bake axis conversion is enabled, and I'm going to turn off embed textures because I prefer to do all the material work in Unity. All right, now that that's done, we're going to check our rig. Perfect. Dun, dun, dun. These objects have an armature modified with preserve volume enabled. Okay, so we're going to disable that just by clicking fix rig. Boom. And then export. Another great feature that Blender doesn't have for some reason is it actually remembers the folder you exported to. So anytime you return to this file and go to export AutoRig Pro, it will remember the folder you're in. But okay, We've gone ahead and finished everything. We're now in Unity. He's facing backwards for some reason. Right, okay. Take it back on one thing, one thing only. Turn off bake axis conversion. And instead, I'm going to say initialize. So this does very similar things, but preferably this one. I think you could just do this. Wait, let me, okay, I'm not gonna figure that out in this video. But this, there we go. Bada boom, export one more time. Save, return here, facing the correct way. And the next thing that you'll need to figure out or use to test the rig in uh, Unity, this is the last thing I'll do before I end the video, is you go to your FBX and uh, first you want to make sure that read write is enabled, legacy blend shape normals are is checked. Those two things should always be on. For your rig, you want it to set to humanoid. Animation, I don't import animation. Sometimes I do, but for the most part, if you're not going to, uncheck it. And then whatever material is going to use, I like to assign them directly here. So Unity knows what to apply, even if I change something. Now, for the rig, a nice way to check if everything's working properly is you can go into configure, and this is Unity's uh, setup for uh, verifying the rig um, and also assigning some missing things. So the first thing that is missing is the spine. Um, so spine two is what we want to put into the chest slot. Uh, upper chest is not needed. If you decided to go with a four bone spine, you'd put spine 03 here. Um, but if you did not, that's fine. You can just use that. Uh, for the head, always remove the jaw. Always. And I like to remove the eyes too. Um, sometimes Unity and VR chat conflict. Okay. And now that we've done that, I'm just going to hit apply. Boom. And then we can go to this other menu, muscles and settings. And this is where we can kind of visually confirm if things are working correctly. So we can just do this open close thing to kind of move the body around. Nice, looks good. No major deformations or breaking. Boom, boom. And then we can do uh, roll. 
Make sure the twist is looking good. And lastly, I usually test the fingers. So we'll go finger open close, which looks quite good. Awesome. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for watching the video and that's kind of the general uh, process for making or for rigging an avatar. Um, there is more to do in Unity, but I wanted to make this video to focus on rigging in Blender using AutoRig Pro. Uh, the weight painting portion applies to any process. Um, the AutoRig Pro uh, may have uh, put some people off, so maybe I'll do another video without using AutoRig Pro. Again, I do recommend it, um, but understandable if you don't want to make the purchase. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Uh, I hope you catch the next one. I'll be doing some more uh, maybe weight, uh, texturing, anything related to VR chat. Definitely a tutorial coming about using that mesh data transfer. Uh, thank you again for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye. All right. Um.